beautiful women to hear. There you go. Have a good meeting. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, good evening and welcome to the Thursday, June 13th, 2024. Uh, Citroen Planning Board meeting here in the Select Board here in the town hall. The general public is welcome to attend via Zoom and all that stuff. Uh, there's a posted agenda if there's a second. Second. Seconded by Ian Burbank. First up is 6 30 p.m. We have a continued public hearing, a site plan review, and a special permit for density and stormwater. It is to be immediately continued to June 27, 2024. I move to accept the applicant's request to continue the public hearing for site plan administrative review and special permit density for cottage court and stormwater permit in the village center and neighborhood district, Greenbush Gateway District, Greenbush Village Center Subdistrict, BCN, GDG, GBC until June 27, 2024 at 6.30 p.m. and to continue the time for action finally with the town clerk until August 2nd, 2024. Is there a second? Second. Second, if I just vote, all in favor. Aye. Yes, Moving right along at 6 35 p.m., we have form A, and A and up with the 799 and 803 Country Way. It assesses map a lot, it's about 12 2 36, 12 2 35, and 12 2 34. Good, good evening. How are you today? Hi, good evening. Doing well. Hey, tell us what's going on. Um, so um, this is for um, we have three lots currently on um, in this proposal, and we are converting them to two lots. Mm -hmm. Um, we are taking one of uh, the, the lot is uh, has an L shape to it. You yeah. probably see here, and the other lot next to it. One of the lots will end up being fourteen thousand five hundred square feet. Um, the other lot uh, we are looking at thirty two thousand square feet total, uh, and we are providing um, safe safe access to an improved public uh, way. Um, so that should be. That is our question. Okay. So we can know internally that it doesn't result from this to approve it. Are they going to clean up the mess? Are you tell them to clean up the mess? It would be a oh, we, we would appreciate that because it looks like we did it left. You know, a set construction guy. Yeah, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So yep. yeah. we, and we have had, I personally have had several complaints about that and have gone to the building commissioner about that. That has been addressed, but has not been resolved. So hopefully, with new loans, that will happen. I will make sure they get the message. Thank you very much. I would appreciate that. Does anybody have anything they'd like to say about a loan by or over? Yeah. Eric? It has access and frontage, so you have to endorse it. Doesn't mean zoning, but that's yeah. not your affair. We will stamp it with the with the stamp. Good. I will pull us as approval on the subdivision control law are not required. A plan of land number 799 and number 803 Country Way, Citrus Mass, by Timothy R. Bennett, professional land player of Brady Consulting LLC, dated May 15, 2024, for applicant owner option C properties, as the division of land is not a subdivision because every lot shown on the plan has frontage of at least the distance presently required. By the situated zone and bylaw on the public way of country way. So, a second. 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 If I miss Lewis, all in favor. Ah. Uh, hey, that's that. That's that. Okay. We would appreciate to see that put up. We'll relay the message. So, we have quite a lot of people. You have minutes and I'll have minutes. So, 
Well, yeah, yeah, I'd like to say that we are a little short staff here tonight. Um, we have what uh, Mr. Lavati is, I think, saying is that he is uh, available to family presence, and Mr. Pritchett is not feeling well, so it's just a lovely day. So, there you go. All right, there you go. Are you staff again? Yeah. Yes. Okay, what time is that on? Well, seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. All right. Well, we have plenty of staff to do for you now. Yeah. Thank you. All right. I move to approve meeting minutes from May 9th, 2024, and May 23rd, 2024. Your second. 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 Miss Lewis. All in favor? Aye. Did we spend any money? A little bit. Okay. I move to approve the requisition of thirty-one dollars forty-nine cents Schwab and Fruit nameplates. For $5,037.70 to Karen Stray, the return of stormwater bond with interest for 31 hour place. For $217.50 to Chessie Consulting for peer review services for 19 four place. For $92.14 to W.B. Mason for office supplies for $5,057.08. To Richard Spence for the return of stormwater bond with interest for Seven Prospect Avenue for three thousand six hundred sixty-eight dollars forty-one cents. The horse of Whitman group for peer review services at Seaside and Situate. The following POs were signed under the Municipal Law Act five thousand two hundred ten dollars. J. M. Bolston for consulting services for MBTA communities, selling and math for Plymouth County Registry of Deeds. For one hundred seven dollars. Your second, second, second. If I miss Lewis, all in favor? Aye. Okay. He's got to. Oh, sorry about that. All right. <laughs> so now we're going to update our MBTA communities. Uh, about <laughs> well, we don't have much to report from our May twenty first letter to EOHLC. We have heard. So I've discussed with town council, and at this point, town council thinks, <coughs> excuse me, I wait till after we get our letter from the AG. We're supposed to get our letter on the zoning, plus or minus um, July 10th. At okay. that point, he thinks that if we then haven't heard from them, we send our letter from the AG, we send our letter back to them and say, we'd really like to not because we want to support, we want to be applying for final compliance. <coughs> Just for general knowledge, uh, Paul has suggested that we should use our So we're, we're kind of in limbo land at the moment. Um, that's where we are. I mean, I, we don't intend to change any zoning for the fall town meeting. We don't have time to do it. would be very, very tight. Very tight. Yeah, we have time, but the point is, we won't know if they don't tell us what our problem is. You can't get something we don't know what's wrong. I'm right. not sure they know what the problem is. Ah, right. They, uh, make they, up, they make up the rules instead of going along. That, that's what it what. seems to be happening. Yep. So. We've known that for a while. And unfortunately, we're, we're on the receiving end of that. <laughs> um, that's all for MBTA community. We haven't, you know, it's so uh, we have we are for the fourth next in um at the next meeting. Um everybody gets to participate in our site meeting. There's <laughs> always so fun and, and we like to, to so look at it, see if there's anything you're interested in. Um Right, it's not we that we don't have to stick. So plus it's nice to have a fresh pair of eyes on, a, on an old project. So just look at it and see if there's anything you you'd be interested in throwing your hat in the ring for. Okay, we'll vote on that next time. I mean, yeah, come out later. Whenever everybody wants to do it. Yeah. You usually ace on this week? I did indeed. I went to uh, traffic rules on Monday night. That lasted 30 minutes. And that was Tuesday, right? But that's fine. Whatever. <laughs> no, Monday night I was at CPC. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, all right, we'll do CPC. Somebody was in with um, 
about bike racks at beaches. Okay. And that has been put off until next month. Bike racks of CPC have to be permanent. They can't be movable. Oh, those are rules. And the next one was the um, path that runs from basically the high school up to Cushing. It's been there forever. Yeah. Yeah. And Carolyn Meehan has been the past two or three years has been working on this. And um came in way out of breath. So we work it out here. Hundred thousand dollars to finish it. You put lights in finally? I don't know if we're putting the lights that are right there doing it, but just be re 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 everything. So that, that was passed. So that show up to I thought the bicycle committee was looking into putting bike racks across town. Well, that could be whatever. I'll bring that up at the next one. I, mean, I would, I would okay. bring that out because I don't know where they were proposing to put them, but I thought the bicycle committee was looking into some of that stuff. And it seems to me that MAPC had funds for bicycle racks. Once upon yeah, one, 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 one time, so. So that's how come that's how come we have some bicycle racks from some money from a while ago, right? Well, I don't know why I might like to look at the rules as also one people each other. There you go. Perfect. How do they rules? That's right. Yeah, yeah, I just come over and get one. That's all. Yeah, and once upon a time was it here or was it CBC? Um, there was a group that wanted to extend the sidewalk. That was what was like that actually. But then no. Well, first, there's no place to put a pass and splash it. No, it's so it's tough. Yeah. And other than that, Karen, you have anything else? I, I didn't know what we had on this. Um, I sent an email to Kevin Kelly on the, on the school, the new oh. school. Um, they are aware that they have to come to us. Um, they are planning on contacting us in the next few months. Mm -hmm. I ask that they, you know, I try to encourage an informal meeting um, and to, that the design not be all done so that there's, you know, how room for maneuvering. For there's room yeah. for maneuvering. Um, but that it, it is on their radar. Um, they're going to be site plan and history review and they're going to be a school lab. So, you know, it's, it's. So could I ask a kind of a, a, an adjacent question to that, which is we have got another one meeting on 221. To ask us for an override, which is kind of indirectly tied to the school, right? Well, it's for the water treatment. Yeah, it's for the water treatment. Kind of money. So um, uh, people need to be very clear that you can't take money from one budget and put it to another. What project you put to work? But that's project. not our responsibility. I, but just so if you that. are watching, you may have an open window. That's it, it's if you do municipal accounting, you, you, you can't move money around like that. That's not that's illegal to do that. Right. So if, if people want to ask us, uh, you know, why we can't do that, we can give them kind of fairly intelligent answer, which is it's just illegal to do that. So. And we'll see if the school comes in to see us before we go back, which they don't tend to do. Well, they, they know they need site plan review. I mean, the middle school came in, yeah. and the middle school was quite a long process. Yeah. So, you know, it's not going to be, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know. Do you want traffic rules? If you want to do traffic rules, then that I'll continue. You continue and because you want to roll, and then I'll tell you about that. Um, they started doing for the, for the condition for 60% occupancy of evaluated traffic. They started that this week at Drew. So um, they were doing traffic house starting on the 11th. So that's good. It's before school was out, and et cetera. So I think they'll get quite, I get, think they'll get a, re the, a true accounting of the number of cars. Um, the December meeting right now, we have it as the 12th and the 19th. The 19th is the third week. I prefer the first and second week. Likely, one of those is going to have to be a zoning workshop. Okay. And 
you know, we'll hope that we can do zoning in January again, or that will be my request to do zoning in January, not during the holiday period, when people think you try and have, you know, all of that small fast one. So, um, so be prepared for the first and second week in December. Okay. First, please. I won't be here at the next meeting, um, but the decision is all written. Um, the applicant had no comments. Um, so I, you know, it should be all ready to just go through the next meeting. So we had nothing scheduled for our next meeting, but right. because Mr. Christian is not here, we had to have continuance. So I would suggest that we need to go to this one project. Well, whatever else comes in. And whatever else whatever comes, comes in. in. I mean, we would do um, this project without care of being here. We had, I had an email from our lawyer friend, Ed Pare, um, oh. and they will be submitting shortly for the small cell at 109 Jericho Road. They are still studying another location, so they're only going to apply for one at this time being. It's the location we all, everyone thought was the better location last year. Um, so we'll see. I mean, I was supposed to talk to him today. I think he must have been busy and tied up. Um, we have a number of stormwater <laughs> permits that are being constructed now. Um, and we, you know, we still remain busy. I have a question about something. With our subdivision rules and regulations, once a subdivision is in, Today, no one can add to that subdivision. We typically, yes, we limit the number of lots. We say that it, under the new subdivision, by like Curtis Escapes, you said you can't divide or subdivide to create new lots. That wasn't uh, always the case. Is there any way to do that for some of the older subdivisions? No, you'd have to have another public hearing. Right. Um, so that people won't just, because land has become so dear that they can figure out how to put in. Well, the planning board, I wouldn't think, would want to bring that topic forward. Oh, right, because that would be opening Pandora's box. Right. You're opening, yes, you are opening a Pandora's box. And, it, you know, it should have been an original decision. A lot of that stuff came out of case law from the early 2000s. So, you know, that's why, you know, most of the towns now write that in their, in their decisions. So if we can't go back, it's supposed to say it was right about it. Right. All right. I just thought I would ask. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. know. All right, traffic rules and regulations. Are you all set, Karen? Um, yep. Yeah. Um, Talked about sidewalk to go from basically the GAR hall across the street to the um, Masonic Temple because people, there's no way to cross the street. There's no side, there's, there's a sidewalk, but there's no crosswalk. And unfortunately, it's within 200 feet of a signal. Can't do it. So <laughs> I don't know what they're going to do, but that's been taken under advisement. Also, too, there was discussion about stop signs at the high school, middle school. And, and they have to do, they have to come up, basically, they have to come up with names. In the streets, oh. so that they can put them into. There's a lot of problems, but I won't pretend to But they're not streets; they're driveways. They're driveways. Yeah, they're driveways. Yeah, they're driveways. They are here. Yes, but in order to have a location, they need to have a name. So it might be north, south, east, west. Okay. Oh no! They need to make the stop signs legitimate. Oh, okay. Because if the stop sign is there, when somebody goes through that stop sign and gets into an accident, um, when all of a sudden done, they can go back and say, well, that wasn't an approved stop sign, therefore, 
you can't go through that one. Okay, so go figure. I learned that too. So it's like that one of the oldest Don't just be scratched. All right. Shakespeare said, Y'all, yes. Yeah, because you're at least I have a good idea. I always have it when it comes in the All right. So we're going to wait on you. Yes, okay. So, Karen, you've got a vision for me to develop you before the house. Well, uh, you want to wrap it up? I kind of want to just say that. I mean, yeah. we still have a lot of stuff going on. I mean, uh, we will, you know, we have I'm sure we'll have another round of projects coming in at some point very soon. And, you know, uh, then things are being constructed out in the field. Not by any big projects, but, you know, things are being constructed. There's a lot of activity out there. So, you want to be aware of the um, landscape girls. Yeah. That was another thing. Yeah. Graphic rules. I asked. When I'm driving down the street and there's this landscape truck parked right there on the street, you can call them to the police and they'll come and do something. Uh, they're they're not, not supposed to be there. But you can buy something here, why to operate the business? Yeah, I can see it there, but it's kind of like we can't control Amazon trucks. We can't control <laughs> the better. But, but the trucks. bottom line is, if the instruction is on my side of the road, yeah. I have to jog and let the traffic come the other way. But not everybody does that. No, no, they don't. They got their license in Sears and Robot. Yeah, they have to go back. Maybe we should have to get our license together like 55 or 60 because fundamentally it gets terrible. Well, I started instituting that today. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
uh, we discussed the issues. I think we came uh, up with satisfactory resolution. And I'm Gabe to be a boy, you know, from Brady and myself for more So I hear that there's been a request. And, and Mary is the case, yeah. Yes. Uh, so I understand. He desperately wants this done. Uh, I, I don't blame him. You chill on me. I just. So there has been a request, Mr. Orberg, I excuse you to bypass the meeting of the decision. Well, what, I, what I'm saying is the, la the last draft of what Karen had, one of, one, and again, it's just a general interest for yeah. the fact we're on this. Is, a lot of things I've been involved procedurally is if by stipulation, you know, because I don't know what an obvious task it is for the board member to remember to do this. If there are if there are any paragraphs, provisions, or whatever that you know we stipulate them. So in other words, there's a written record that's here. So other than then usually the motion at the end is if, it, if there's some changes, we say make the motion to approve the document as as presented as as uh, modified. Well, Karen has not received any comment from us. We believe this is a fine document. Um, but we just got we got the revised version this afternoon. Yeah, which I read. I, I know I have more time than most. Yeah, the document at two twenty four. Yeah, and I hope that I, I, just, I hope that I need to read everything as it comes in. Would you like to do this just like three minutes or so, so so you can for us? Yeah, if you like, or, or we can take a straw vote. If you, why don't you continue to read this? Please let me. Or so we've been through this for over a year. So we really got to a granular level as to what has to be done. And if Mr. Orenberg and Ms. Joseph agree that this is the best decision that we're going to reach, I no, if the board's in agreement with it, that our clients have been dancing the ball with it too long. You know what? Tonight, I think we should just read it. Uh, okay. Oh, yes. Otherwise, we're going to be sitting here. And we, we do have some people online. Okay. And we have our consulting engineer. And oh, okay. We have, I know that that's somebody from the Water Resource Committee. I think what we go, going forward, we may try to do this. Okay. So, so this is the first the first Shall guest. I? Michelle. Here we go, people. Pay attention. I move to make the following findings of fact. One, Mary E. McKay, the applicant, filed an application for site plan administrative review for common driveway less than 500 feet long to serve two lots with adjoining legal frontage and a stormwater permit for lots one and two, Laurelwood Drive, now as assessor's map block lot 30-01-06A at 30-02-22B property with the town clerk of January 18, 2024. The applicant's deed, deeds are recorded with the Plymouth Town Registry of Deeds at book 6721, page 331 for lot one and book 57136, page 169 for lot three. Two, according to assessor's records, lot one is owned by David and Mary E. McKay. Lot two is owned by Mary E. McKay, Patrick O'Brien, and Scott D. McKay as trustees of lot two, Laurelwood Drive. May I ask a question while we're doing this? Um, we have permit the lots one and two, and then down the bottom we have lot one and page 169 to lot three. I find that a little confusing. Those are three comes in. I don't know what they are. So see, this is one and two. Yeah, lot two is check. number three. Lot I'll one. double check it. Okay, I, it's just a, okay, fine. I shall continue. Thank you. One common driveway is the rules to the common driveway. According to the revised plan dated 5.4.2024, which measures the drive from the property line, the length of it is 301 feet. It serves two lots with joint legal frontage. Lot one has received a 50 foot frontage special permit from the CBA. For lot one, number one, Laurelwood Drive contains 2.01 acres or approximately 87,608 square feet of land, all of which is upland. Lot two, number three, Laurelwood Drive contains 2.34 acres and approximately 100. 
2,258 square feet of land, all of which is upheld. The lots in the residence are one zoning district and partially within the Water Resource Protection District, the planning board endorsed a four-day plan created Lot 1 on 1-11-2024 and Lot 2 on 12-9-2021. Five, a large portion of Lots 1 and 2 are in the Water Resource Protection District. The zoning bylaw establishes a Water Resource Protection District to include areas significant to the town's drinking water, Supply source, which requires zone protection. The water resource protection district requires all runoff from impervious services to be recharged on the site, diverted toward areas covered with vegetation and service infiltration to the extent possible. One inch of roof runoff is recharged for both entire roof areas. The first inch of runoff is recharged on both lots for all impervious. Areas where the premises are partially outside of the WRPD, potential pollution sources such as on site waste disposal systems shall be located outside of the district to the extent feasible. The leaching fields for both lots are located outside the Water Resource Protection District. Seven, the zoning bylaw prohibits rendering impervious any lot slash parcel more than 15% of 2,500 square feet. Whichever is greater, unless a system of artificial recharge is provided that will not result in degradation of water quality. Lot 1 proposes an impervious area of 11,776 square feet, which is 13.4% of the lot. Lot 2 proposes impervious area of 6,701 square feet of impervious, which is 6.55% of the lot. Both lots show less than 15% impervious area of the lot. Stormwater infiltration areas on the lots are outside of the WRPD. Eight, under the Stormwater Bylaw, Section 32050 of the General Bylaws, all development and redevelopment projects that will be disturbed over 15,000 square feet of land in a residential zone district render 25% or more of an undeveloped lot impervious or increase the impervious area of the developed lot by 25% or more, even if it's conducted, even if it's conducted over separate phases and, and or by separate owners requires a stormwater permit. The proposed land, the proposed total impervious area of lot one is 11,776 square feet as indicated in the application. There is no existing impervious area on lot one Thus, there is an increase of 100%. The proposed area of disturbance for grading or clearing is 84,493 square feet, according to the application, or approximately 96.44% of the site of the lot one. The proposed total impervious area of lot two is 66,701 6, square feet, as indicated in the application. There is no existing impervious area on Lot 2, thus there is an increase of 100%. The proposed area of disturbance for degrading or clearing is 50,074 square feet, according to the application, or approximately 49% of Lot 2. 80% and 90% TSS removal has been provided from outside and inside the WRPD, and adequate recharge has been provided for both lots. Nine, the standards of the common driveway indicate the location and construction of the common driveway should minimize soil disturbance, vegetation removal, and drainage impacts and preserve existing trees over 12 inch caliber and other natural features of special significance. The plan shows soil disturbance and vegetation removal for constructing the common driveway. Its drainage systems and two five bedroom single family dwellings, driveways, two, sep two septic systems, and drainage systems. Fill is needed to construct the site. Anywhere from one to seven feet of fill will be brought in to construct the two lots as shown. An unknown number of trees over 12 inch caliber must be removed. The proposed stormwater management system has been reviewed by the town's consulting engineer 
TPC, the engineer group, whose comments indicate the stormwater system will keep the rate and volume of runoff the same or lower than pre development condition. Based on the findings of that presented in numbers one through seven, the common driveway meets, does, does, yes, no, or do the, meets, 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 meets the standards of section 720.7a. Can the common driveway is 14 feet in width or 295 feet past the separate driveway for law one? The driveways have been reduced to 12 feet up on both lots beyond the common driveway easement. The common driveway section includes two foot grass sh shoulders on <coughs> each side. The fire department has indicated that the 14 foot width in the common driveway easement is acceptable for service to walks. The common driveway meets the requirements of section 7.7b. 11, the common driveway is accessed from Marlwood Drive, a private road in situ. The common driveway is not connected to any other common driveway. The common driveway meets the requirements of section 720.7c. 12, the common driveway shall be located in an easement which allows space for installation of water lines and utilities. The water line and electric line are shown to be in the common driveway easement. Utilities are shown as underground utilities. Minimal, minimal snow storage is shown for the common driveway portion of the driveway. Common driveway meets the requirements of section 70, 20.70. 13, the common driveway cross section shows the top course of one and a half inches of the two minutes concrete top course over one and a half Tuminous binder over a 12 inch roadway foundation, compacted over subgrade depth to C1 layer barriers. Frost free subgrade shall be provided for the roadway foundation and the parent, parent material top of C1 layer. Common driveway meets the requirements of section 7.7e. 14. The common driveway is approximately 301. Long measure from the clock property line to station 3 plus 01 on location approximately 40 feet beyond the driveway for wall one. This is less than 500 feet and meets the requirements of section 7.7 F. 15. The stormwater permit has been filed simultaneously with the common driveway permit. Plan indicates there is no increase in rate volume of stormwater to abutting. Properties. The site is partially in the Water Resource Protection District, so the board must review adequacy, the adequacy of measures proposed to maximize recharge and surface infiltration of surface runoff, the repurposed surfaces, and the diversion of runoff toward vegetated areas. The applicant has stamped and certified there will be no increase in rate or volume of runoff to abutting properties for the 1, 2, 10, 25, and 100 year. 24 hour storm events. TEC, the engineering group, has indicated the stormwater management system should work as runoff draining to abutting properties shall not exceed that which exists prior to the construction of the common driveway and lots one and two. Runoff is not discharged into the private way of Marlboro Drive at a greater rate of volume than goes there now. The common driveway meets the requirements of section 720.7G. As the lots are partially located in the Water Resource Protection District, treatment of surface runoff is maximized by sand filters, wet swales, and subsurface detention chambers in the WRPD and an infiltration basin outside the WRPD. 16. No impervious areas are located above the major components of the proposed septic system. Common driveway meets the requirements of section 7.7H as no impervious barriers are above the proposed septic system. The proposed septic system will meet all water code requirements. The standards and review in section 7.7H have been met. Seven the common driveway will be buffered by vegetation from the adjacent single family house at Five World Drive and partially minimally buffered from say 787 First Parish Road. The common driveway plan shows plantings to enhance the existing vegeta vegetation 
to remain along the northerly or southerly edges of the common driveway. The common driveway meets the requirement of section 7.17i. The common driveway may be set back from adjacent properties and or screened with buffer of with the buffer of trees and shrub to reduce visual impacts of the common driveway <clears throat> on abutting properties. 18. A turnaround for emergency vehicles shall be provided with a minimum length of 30 feet and with 20 feet in locations approved by the planning board after consultation with the fire department. The city fire chief, the city deputy fire chief indicated the turnaround meets this, the requirements. The common driveway meets the requirements of section 7.7J. 19, the common driveway plan in the town is situated for number one and number three Laurel Drive, dated 4324, shows the intersection site distance required at the common driveway entrance of 300 feet have been met for the posted speed limit of 25 miles per hour and American Association of State Highway and Transportation Officials, ASHTO, standards are met. Stopping site, stopping site distance has been shown and has been met. The common driveway meets the requirements of section 7.17a. 20. Lot width for lots served by a common driveway may be measured parallel to the common driveway, except in the case of 50 foot frontage lots. The lot width of lot one is greater than 175 feet and is not measured parallel to the common driveway. And this is a 50 foot frontage lot. Lot two is not a 50 foot frontage lot and has lot width of greater than 175 feet. The common driveway meets the requirements of section 720.7L. 21, all portions of the common driveway shall be set back a minimum of 10 feet from any adjoining property line other than the property line for each of the residential lots to be served by the driveway. 10 feet has been provided to the lot to the south by Wood Drive. The common driveway meets the requirements of section 720.7M. 22, the common driveway shall be located 50 feet from any existing driveway or public or private way. The common driveway is located 57.4 feet from the driveway of Five Wallows Drive. The common driveway meets the requirements of section 720.7 and 23, the lots served by the common driveway shall each use the common driveway as the sole means of access. The common driveway meets the requirements of 720.70 or O. 24, the common driveway shall have a minimum grade of 1% and a maximum grade of 9%. Common driveway meets the requirements of section 720.70 P. Twenty-five, the common driveway shall have a radar radar. 25 feet at the point of intersection of the public way. Common driveway is 25, grade I, where it meets the private way of Wallow and Drive. The common driveway meets the requirements of section 720.7Q. 26, based on these findings and information submitted by the applicant and reviewed by the planning board, the common driveway meets the requirements of section 720. Okay. Yes. I, I I find it a little confusing when one block one two and then suddenly block three shows up. I I'll look at it. I'll look at it. That's the lots. The lots were numbered one through five. Yeah. Right. But but when the addresses I want to be done for you because they're all on the same side of the road. I understand, but when it says one and two, I'll go back and check the yeah. check the table. Okay. One and two and one and three. Okay. 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 Yeah. 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 Second. Second. Is there a second? Second. Second is the five is the rules. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes, it was a vote. Yep, I'm all set. Here we go. <laughs> I've got those. We know. I don't know what I say. Okay. okay. Based on the testimony presented at the 
public hearing meetings and public hearings. Ladies and gentlemen, presented at the public meetings and public hearing, application and plans, minutes of meetings, documents, and comments submitted in the findings of fact. I move to approve the site plan administrative review of common ground and garden. All right, number one, subject to the following conditions. One, the common driveway and lots one and lot two, number one and three, Laurelwood Drive, shall be constructed according to plans and title common driveway and town situated, number one and three, Laurelwood Drive. Now I understand. Okay, okay. Consisting of sheets one and two and stormwater curtain site plan for number one and number three, Laurelwood Drive, is the past, dated November 3, 2023, with revisions to 5.4. Prepared for applicant Mary, Kay, Mary McKay by Brady Consultant LLC. Stormwater management design calculations for block four, one, and three. Warwood Drive, dated November 3rd, 2023, with revisions through 524, 2024, including pre and post development watershed plans, stormwater permit site plan for one and three Warwood Drive in situate mass, dated. November 3rd, 2023, with revision to 524-2024 by Grady Consulting LLC, easement plan, common driveway, and rain easement plan in town of Citrus, Mass, number one and number three, Laurelwood Drive, dated by February 26, 2024, with revision to 524-2024 by Gross Engineering Company, Inc. Inclusive of all information including permit application, calculations, operation, and maintenance information. All cover letters with submittals as further revised to meet these conditions. A copy of the approved plans and conditions shall be kept on the site at all times during construction. Two, one and three Garwood Drive, lots one and two, shall access over the common driveway as depicted by the plan. No further extensions or attachments to any other roadways or common driveways or other access to any other lots besides those created by the plan shall be permitted <coughs> on approval of the planning board. The common driveway shall remain private in perpetuity and shall never be considered for acceptance as a town road, and that all maintenance and repair of the common driveway and drainage facilities shall be the responsibility of the owners of the property. A note shall be placed on the plan. Indeed, for each lot serviced by the common driveway, stating the above was truly provided to the planning board prior to occupancy of the first unit. Three, the, the applicant shall meet the current application and all successors in interest. This common driveway permit and stormwater permit shall last within two years from the date of its issuance and shall not include such time required to pursue or await the determination. Of appeal under Mass General Laws Chapter 40A from the grant thereof, unless substantial use of construction has commenced prior to that time in accordance with Mass General Laws Chapter 40A, Section 9. The Planning Board may extend such period of good cause shown upon receiving a written request from the applicants prior to the expiration of that period, which shall provide a detailed description of good cause necessitating. An extension. The planning board office must receive written notification at least one week prior to any change of ownership of the property occurring during construction. Four copies of this approval, including common driveway and stormwater plans and common driveway and easement agreement, shall be provided to subsequent owners who shall be advised of the need for the maintenance of the stormwater system for current operation and maintenance plan and site plans. The, and the need to retain the grading on the lot as approved at all times following the installation of stormwater infrastructure and prior to the transfer of the property, except for the initial transfer of the property, if applicable, the owner shall provide to the subsequent owner and the planning office an inspection report certified by a professional engineer showing compliance with the operation and maintenance plan. The planning office must receive the said written notification within one week of any change in ownership of the property pre construction and during construction. Five, there shall be no further division or subdivision of any lots 
shown on the plan, the purpose is construction of additional units or buildings. There should be no further expansion than building or further soil on the site. Unless it is demonstrated to the planning board satisfaction that such a proposed expansion is in compliance with the stormwater bylaw and the provisions of the water resource protection district. No additional dwelling units shall be added. No additional expansion of the limit of work is allowed without further approval of the central planning board. Six, the applicant shall consent to allow members and town officials from, uh, from the planning board and other persons acting under the planning board or its agents to enter upon any lands and carry out such surveys and inspections as may be deemed necessary and place and maintain monuments. The applicant shall cooperate with the planning board and town officials and assist them in their effort to verify that the layout, design, and construction work are satisfactory and conform to town specifications and requirements of the board. Seven, prior to pre construction onwards, the applicant must obtain all necessary approvals and meet all requirements from the Board of Health, Conservation Commission, Fire Department, Building Department, and Department of Public Works. And these shall be deemed conditions of the planning board approval. Any state and federal permits must be obtained if required and supplied to the planning board office prior to scheduling the pre construction office and are also deemed conditions of the planning board approval. This includes NIPTIS permit, the, the activated NIPTIS permit shall be provided to the planning office prior to construction. A construction shall meet all requirements of Situs on the bylaw, all the contractors are responsible, all conditions shown on the plans, and in the written decision. Now, no new ground irrigation system shall be allowed to connect to the tax water distribution system or in any manner use municipal water. In accordance with this policy, all irrigation systems installed and situated must be supplied by on site sources at the expense of crop owners. Bounds for violating this rule may be levied by the homeowner, levied on the homeowner, as well as the system installed. Ten, the septic system shall meet all the requirements of Title V and 310 CMR 22, including a reserve area. Any changes to the plan necessitated, necessitated by compliance with any board of health provision requires notification of the town planner to determine if the change is significant. For Eleven, no work is allowed beyond the limit of work slash tree line without approval of the planning board. The entire limit of work is to be staked with erosion control for the construction. Fines shall be imposed for disturbance beyond the limit of work, and any disturbance beyond the limit of work will be subject to appropriate restoration with the restoration plan to be submitted to and approved by the planning board. 12. The post construction operation and maintenance plan shall be strictly adhered to so that 80% not in the water resource protection district or 90% in the water resource protection district. Total suspended solid DSS removal is achieved at all times. An annual report is to be provided, is to be provided to the planning board yearly by June 30th, certifying all required maintenance has been completed for the plan. See condition 21 as well. 13, all utilities shall be placed in the ground. 14, the infiltration basin shall be installed to have a bottom elevation a minimum of two feet above seasonal high groundwater elevations. Subsurface detention systems shall be lined to prevent the infiltration. Stormwater during construction as well as after construction is not allowed to increase a greater volume to adjacent properties, street, or off-site. 15. No sediment, including silty water, shall be allowed to leave the site during construction. 16. No deep watering water shall be placed in the road right away. All water from deep watering must remain on the project site. <laughs> 17. The wet swale slash water quality swale on the north side of the common driveway may not be altered in any form without additional permission the town Planner slash planning board. The seed mixer plants may not be altered. 
The operation and maintenance plan shall be revised to include manufacturer's recommendations, installation and maintenance of the seed mix slash plants prior to application for a building permit. 18. The infiltration chambers, wet swale, and in as wet swale, sand filter, and infiltration basin must be retained and maintained as designed as they are components of the stormwater system. Maintenance must be currently approved post construction phase operation and maintenance plan. Proper maintenance of the systems is required beyond the issuance of a certificate of completion. A best management practices inspection for schedule and maintenance checklist is attached and will serve as a guide for proper maintenance of the system which is required to refer to. 19. Any condition in a hearing that varies from the plan supersedes the plan where different. 20. A sign shall be placed at the entrance of the driveway prior to occupancy, clearly depicting house numbers. House numbers must be clearly visible at all times for emergency response purposes. Common driveway agreement. 21. Common driveway agreement shall assigned to the owners of number one and number three while we drive the responsibilities and costs of maintaining and repair of the common driveway, including snow power, as well as sand filter, wet swale, infiltration chambers, and infiltration basin. All other drainage devices, grading, and other improvements for stormwater management in the common driveway and easement agreement. The responsibilities of maintenance in the common driveway and easement agreement shall include all requirements of the operation maintenance plan, which shall be attached to the agreement together with other typical maintenance, such as snow plowing and driveway repair. The agreement shall indicate no parking is allowed in the common driveway easement area, and a sign indicating there is no parking must be placed in the easement area. The agreement shall require annual certification to be submitted to the town plan by June 30 yearly by an engineer that stormwater system is being properly inspected and maintained for the operation and maintenance plan. The operation and maintenance plan shall also be provided to the planning board as a stand along the document. Town plan. CF. Okay. Here we go. I do. The agreement shall be reported at registry of deeds with the site plan review permit and stormwater permit. No pre-construction conference and building permits will issue without a recorded common driveway and easement agreement. The common driveway agreement and operation and maintenance plan must be provided to prospective owners. Proper evidence shall be presented to the town planner. And these documents were provided to the respective buyers. 22. Any plan or changes, any plan changes or changes for the proposed materials shall be submitted to the planning office to determine if the changes are insignificant or require a permit modification approved by the board or town planner. The stormwater management system, including all recharge chambers and components of the system, house driveways, grading, and site amenity locations shall not be changed or expanded without prior written approval of the issuing authority. Expansion includes additional pavement areas or increase in impervious area. Failure to obtain written approval is a violation of the town institute stormwater bylaw and subject to fines. 23. The use of pesticides and fertilizers shall be strictly prohibited. Construction. 24. Uh, Pre-construction conference will be required prior to the start of the construction to verify the contractor is aware of the stormwater permit and common driveway permit and require inspections. Attendees at the pre-construction <laughs> shall include the planning board's consulting engineer, a representative of PPW, the site design engineer, the owner, the site contractor, and not there. Reporting of the permit must occur prior to the reconstruction conference with approved or reported first in training office. 25. Prior to scheduling the brief conference, pre construction conference, the applicant shall provide to the town planner A the 
40 copy of the plans on the driveway. And storm, uh, storm water permit decision on the driveway agreement and the permit panel registry of deeds. Failure to record the storm water permit is a violation of the permit and subject to fines including, included in the general bylaw. D, the initial deposit with the town planner of $5,000 under general laws, chapter 44, subsection 53G to serve to secure construction review and inspections by the town associate consulting engineer. The deposit shall be applied for the cost of construction inspections for the common driveway and stormwater improvements. The specific amount provided to the planning department shall be based on the consulting engineer's estimate and shall be subject to amendment from time to time and be supplemented by the applicant as requested. C, the applicant shall provide sharing of $10,000 either in cash or bond prior to beginning construction of the common driveway, the guaranteed completion of the common driveway, the drainage system, site work, landscaping, and cleanup of the site compliance with the stormwater plan and conditions. After the town planner has inspected the site and found grading, booming, and seeding, cleanup of earth materials, and construction free to be complete along with the as built approved and a cert certificate of completion issued, these funds shall be charged after. And D, a schedule of construction activities, including approximate dates for installation of erosion control and other site stabilization features for all phases of the construction and all applicable items in the subdivision rules and regulations 9.1.3 and stormwater management inspections outlined in condition 36 shall be given to the town planner and the applicant shall provide funds to cover the cost of inspections and attendance at the pre construction conference by the town's consulting engineer. Temporary drainage measures shall be provided on site in the initial phase of construction prior to post construction. The common driveway shall be required for all inspections. A road is required to have. 26. The town planner is to be notified when construction begins and when construction is completed. 27. Prior to scheduling the pre construction conference, the applicant shall provide the town planner with permits for the Citroen DBW, the street opening, and the curb cut. 28. The property line and boundary of the limit of clearing shall be marked off ledge in the field under the direction of the surveyor. A notification to the town planner and consulting engineer a minimum of five days prior to the start of construction. The property line and limit of clearance shall remain staked in the field throughout construction. 29. A stabilized construction entrance shall be installed prior to any work on the site and shall be maintained throughout construction to prevent dirt cracking onto the roadway. The town planner shall be notified when complete work and the inspection. Permit inspections require 48 hours notice, exclude weekends. 30. Prior to any land disturbance, erosion control shall be installed and inspected by the town planner or approved agent. At this time, the site shall also be staked to show the house locations, driveways, and drainage system components. All stockpiles shall be surrounded by an erosion control barrier. Additional erosion control, such as silt fence, Silk soft or hay bales placed prior to a precipitation event may be needed to prevent sediment from reaching the road or adjacent properties during construction. All erosion control shall be installed per the plan and shall be maintained to good working order by <coughs> construction. The applicant is responsible for maintaining and managing strong water on site throughout the construction period and during the transition to fully functional operations and maintenance. Construction approval is in no way, in no way, relieves the applicant from its obligation to ensure stormwater does not impact the abutting, the abutting problems, and the applicant shall take all reasonably necessary steps to prevent such occurrences. 31. Any proposed changes in grading and drainage from the approved plan must be reviewed by the town planner and the town's consulting engineer to determine if they are materially significant. The applicant's engineer shall certify that such changes shall result in 
no impact on the drainage system and shall not increase turnoff onto wall of the drive, abutting walls, or the rate of drawing post condition from the pre development condition. 32. All disturbed areas and proposed lawns and soil areas shall have a minimum of six inches of clean stream flow. Okay. 33. No staging or stockpiling is allowed within the areas where the underground chambers will be installed. 34. There shall be no flow to the subsurface systems until the tributary area to area is stabilized or treated as required by the construction, operation, and maintenance plan. 35, no use of hydrants on the adjacent road offsite is allowed for construction. A hydrant may be available at the water treatment plan for construction use if water supply allows for non-water restriction times and permission is obtained for BW. 36, the inspections for this development will be done in accordance with sections 9.1.3 of the Town of Subdivision Rules and Regulations as modified in the next sentence. The Town's consulting engineer shall perform these inspections with costs paid by the applicant. All required inspections shall take place and be inspected by the consulting right. engineer, including water lines along PPW. Time reports shall be submitted to the planning board stating the results of all required inspections unless more frequent reports are needed. 48 hours minimum advanced notice is required for all inspections. In addition to section 9.1.3, inspections for the common driveway, the following inspections are required for the stormwater management system. One, all stormwater recharge structures require inspection of the bottom of the excavation by the consulting engineer prior installation. Two, installed chambers must be inspected prior to back filling. Three, rough grading of the site, including swales, infiltration basin, site and driveways, verified grades as designed, are as designed, including slope and driveway grading. Four, finished grading of site and stormwater system. Five, inspection of the final completion of site work, including cleanup to determine compliance with conditions prior to issuance of certificate of completion. All grass must be growing and landscaping completed. Swift inspections for meet this permit by the applicant must be submitted after every half inch storm. 37, construction of the common driveway, site stormwater management systems, <coughs> grading and water system shall be supervised by a registered professional engineer approved by the planning board who shall certify in writing to the planning board at completion that the driveways, grading, drainage structures, and utilities were constructed in accordance with the approved plans. This certification shall be accompanied by as bill plan signed and stamped by a registered professional plan surveyor and a supervising professional engineer. No certificate of occupancy shall be issued until the planning board is satisfied that the access construction of the driveways, grading, installation of drainage structures, stormwater management features, installation of utilities, and site stabilization are in full compliance with the approved plans and permit. The as built shall include construction conditions of the stormwater management system, including top and bottom elevations and inverts and spot grids, as to show the stormwater management system flows as designed. The stormwater system must be functioning in accordance with the design requirements and the as-built certification must include a statement that any variation in grade is immaterial and does not materially alter the performance of the stormwater system. Prior to application for a certificate of occupancy, an interim as-built must be submitted to the planning office for verification that the stormwater management system and grading are following the approved plans. The final as bill must be submitted prior to obtaining a certificate of completion, and all work must be found in compliance with the approved permit. All grading and landscaping must be completed with grass grown prior to receiving a certificate of completion. 38. Grade states shall be provided for the inspection of the consultant engineer prior to gravel and shall remain for inspection 
to file a hate installation. 39. Prior to issuance of an occupancy permit, the board's consulting engineer shall inspect the lots and notify the plan and building commissioner that the common driveways, rating, drainage, site utilities, and stabilization conforms to that shown on the common driveway and stormwater permit. Four, the construction work shall not begin prior to 7 a.m. on weekdays and 8 a.m. on weekends and shall cease no later than 7 p.m. or sunset, whichever is earlier. No construction is permitted on Sundays and federal and legal state holidays. Construction work includes any operation of machinery and island of vehicles. The name and phone number of the 24 hour content shall be provided to the planner, building department, police department, and department of works to be used in the event of an emergency prior to the construction. Almost there. 41. There shall be no parking, loading, or unloading of construction equipment, staging, or island of vehicles on Laurelwood Drive or adjacent public roads during construction. Unless a police detail is provided, it warranted as determined by the police department. 42. Stockpiles shall be located as shown on the plans and must be protected with erosion controls, including but not limited to silk socks and temporary seating. 43. Construction activities shall be conducted in a workmanlike manner at all times. Noise mitigation and proper dust controls shall be taken so that levels of Levels conform to mass DEP policies. All equipment that emanates sound shall be kept in proper working order through regular maintenance. Driveway sweeping shall be used to control dust from leaving the site. A wheel wash station may be required to prevent sediment from leaving the site. Blowing dust or debris shall be controlled by the applicant through stabilization, wetting down, or other proper storage and disposal methods. 44. Construction activities. On site shall conform to town of Situate general bylaws. 45. Site lines on Laurelwood Drive shall be maintained for the plans. 46. Snow removal must occur outside the same project locations. 47. All construction shall comply with all applicable requirements of the Water Resource Protection District in Section 520 of the Zoning Bylaw as applicable. No finished slope shall exceed four. One in the WRPD. 48. No certificate of occupancy, of occupancy shall be issued until both the planning board and building commissioner are satisfied that access, construction of the common driveway, and installation of necessary utilities <coughs> in compliance with the approved plan and the site plan administrative review. 49. If the drainage system is not performing as designed and conditioned. During or after construction is complete, a stormwater is inserted flowing to abutting properties or to the street in excess of the approved stormwater management report. Stormwater authority may request necessary mitigation to remedy the situation. This condition survives the issuance of a certificate of condition. 50. Prior to application for building permit, a new landscape plan shall be submitted showing. A variety of pines, spruces, and cedars to be used to screen instead of all white pines. The required average shall be the size of six to seven foot as currently shown. 51. An illicit discharge compliance statement in accordance with stormwater bylaw and its regulations shall be provided prior to construction. Administration 52. This common driveway site plan review. And stormwater permit shall run with the land and be void if it is not recorded at the registry of deeds prior to the commencement of the construction of the common driveway within 120 days of the expiration of the appeal period, except only for a cause to be, be approved by the planning board. The applicant shall provide proof of this report to the planning board prior to go. Are you all set? I hope so. Second. Second for discussion. Second for discussion. The discussion. Why is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Anybody online? Anybody online? Sure. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, 
Can yeah, you hi. Just identify yourself with your name and address, please, and then you can ask a question. Sure. Bruce Arbanese, uh, 23 Gannett Pasture Lane, and uh, oh. chair of the Water Resources Commission. Um, a few months ago, the town engineering consultant told me that the stormwater management plan was sufficient, um, which is great. But then at the last meeting I was at, it sounded like the uh, cost of implementing that infrastructure to manage the water was very substantial. I just want to make sure that the uh, um, that the folks who actually have to pay for that are are on board with the the estimated cost. We don't really have the control of the dam store version. We, we don't have control of the dam People are well aware of that, thank you. If there have if there's if there's plan changes, they have to come back for approval. Okay. If they, they can't afford it, they have to go to something else, they need to come to us. Okay, thanks. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Anything else? No, it's just this. So you you have a second, yes? Yes, yes. All in favor? Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mrs. McKay, for your patience. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Orbert, for your having. Good evening. For the record, my name is Walter Stallman. I'm the attorney for the applicant and owner, Sale Home Inc. With me, of course, is Greg Morse, the project engineer. Uh, so we have an application for site plan review. This project, I'm sure the board knows, this is a 501c3 that owns this property. Uh, they intend to utilize it for their adult disabled children, both intellectually and developmentally, um, who will be in person residential facility for them. These are children who have aged out of the system who are adults. Uh, there will be five residential units there, nine bedrooms in total. Um, the lot is now 23,161 square feet. There is currently an 8,000 square foot building on it that previously housed um, administrative and office space for corporation. There are six separate entrances to the facility. We are not changing the footprint at all. Um, we are going to retrofit it for our purposes. Um, I think the board is aware that uh, this is a project under 48 section three, the Dover Amendment. Um, so there is sort of limited obligations of the applicant. Um, we, uh, what I would propose to do at this point is have Mr. Morris take the board um, through the plan and then I can uh, sort of tie things up and respond to any questions if that needs to be shared. So, approval. Absolutely. Right. Great. Thank you. Uh, again, for the record, Gregory Morrison, registered engineer with Morrison Engineering. 
uh, as depicted in as Attorney Sullivan just said, the property is at 809 Country Way. Uh, the lot itself, 23,161 square feet, is entirely upland land area. This is in the North Situate Outer Village Zoning District. We're not located in the Water Resource Protection District. We're not in the Floodplain District. There are no Zone 2s or Zone As. There's no floodplain on the property. Um, it's, it's high and dry for our test purposes. Um, the property has an existing building on it. The footprint of that building is a little over 6,000 square feet. It was uh, formerly office and high-tech manufacturing. Uh, as stated, we're retrofitting the building uh, the interior to repurpose it in five residential units. The breakdown of those units, there's two one-bedroom units, there are two two-bedroom units, and there's one three-bedroom unit uh, for a total of nine bedrooms on the property. That leaves approximately 1,700 square feet that would be left over for small retail and office space. The office space uh, is essentially going to be used by the property owner to run the, the building and to run the operations. The changes that we're making to the site, we are not proposing any changes to the building itself as far as additions to the buildings or to the building, uh, but we are changing the front. There's an existing parking lot across the entire frontage of the property that has capacity right now for over 20 vehicles. We are putting a new septic system in the location of that parking lot. Uh, the new septic system has been before the Board of Health and it has been before the Conservation Commission received approval. Over that septic system, once it's constructed, we would be building a uh, lawn area, which is common yard space. We would be restriping the existing parking lot. We'd be cutting down the number of parking spaces to 12 spaces. The bylaw would require 10.4 based off of the floor area, so we comply with the parking requirements, two of those, uh, excuse me, one of those is an eight accessible space. The open space on the property is increased by 33.6% because of the removal of the impervious surfaces for the septic system, as well as the site impervious overall is reduced by 18% by construction of the septic system and replacing it with lawn service. Um, I'm going to turn it over to you unless you have any detailed questions you want me to get into. I have one question. We won't go with any decision. Uh, your taxes up to date, they're paid. Your taxes were paid. I'm sorry. Your taxes and not paid. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me yeah, respond. Right, so, so, obviously, my clients don't pay taxes at a nonprofit, they paid the first quarter. And they had a discussion with the uh, tax assessor. They thought it paid them through the year, but there's actually one quarter still owed. My client spoke to him today. They're going to pay that off on Monday. Yeah. And then it will go as a non taxable entity. Yeah, I, I, I didn't know that. It doesn't flip over until the next tax year, which is, I guess, July. Okay. Right. July. Okay. okay. That's, that's our first question. Right. Nothing goes forward unless all the money is. We have some questions about the new wall, which is for a Bible Scott and I will work. All right. Um, Ashley has several questions with the wall notwithstanding. I feel very, very strongly that that wall needs to go away. It absolutely serves no earthly purpose. It's not holding up anything. This whole area is changing. The lots on either side of this building are being developed. I am a big proponent of site distances, and that wall inhibits site distances. It's 42 inches tall, and again, it serves no purpose. So I would like to see that wall move. So this has been, uh, we've been asked about that from a prior application and my client's first response was they need some privacy for their, their people, the residents who are going to be there. Additionally, our septic system is going to be mounted and it's going to require a wall. 
I well, I'd like you, I, I, before we go on any further, I'd like you to explain the septic system, how that, what what the elevation and how the wall is holding the grades. Because I took it to be a retaining wall that for the septic system, and the Board of Health is something on file that says it's not a retaining wall. So I'm, I'm just, we're all trying to understand the function of the wall. Sure. Um. So where the septic system is going, it's going uh, in the portion of the existing parking lot on the north end of the property there. The grades are coming up there. The existing grade is at elevation 23 in the middle of the septic system. It's coming up to elevation 27.2. Uh, our intent is to grade flat over the septic system, which brings it over to where the existing wall is. We're tying into that wall uh, as a retaining structure. I have a real problem with that. I really do. Because I look at this. That's one of the problems I have with this. Please understand that I am a proponent of what the applicant is doing. I think this is a wonderful idea and it's something this time has come. But I have sat in on two other hearings, both with the House and the Trust and with CPC. And we were told that, yes, office space, but there was also, you've got um, retail. retail. What is the retail, please? Explain the retail to me. So there, there's been ideas about having some type of a flower shop where these residents could work, but nothing has been determined. And obviously, it would have to be for a bit. So it's something that would be therapeutic, and it hasn't been determined what that would be. Well, it was my understanding that in going forward, that that space with the, um, and they were thrilled that there was a loading dock because they had someone in mind to do some type of work, sort of, I don't know, to make things and sell them so that it was commercial. And, I mean, this is what we were told. Just there's an existing loading dock in the front of the building. It's right. been our intent since day one to remove that loading dock. And when we were told that they needed that loading dock, so um, there's a little bit of fuzziness here. Sounds like, because our plans have always showed the loading dock being removed since day one. Well, it doesn't show this on this plan. Yes, it does. It's, it shows two contours going through the loading dock. Okay. All right, well, we've got some issues here. These are real issues. Number one, the loading, the wall has to go away. Wait a second. Well, let's just, let's just try. No, but maybe even lower it. Okay, that's what it's called. I can never find any original drawers in this building. Yeah. And I think every bit of that wall always be, you don't know how it got there. And it's higher than walls that are normally allowed in the town, especially those pediments on the edge. And they're heavily really shaped. So if 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 they try to we are they are trying we are redeveloping this for housing. So you know our, our first concern is always safety. You know, it's always spot that really has the sidewalk. Appreciate that. Try to get it all around. But when you drive, the pyramids are very defined. So it might not be the whole wall, it might just be those two pyramids. As you enter the driveway. Ash, no, it, it's the one as you face it on the right hand side next to a 19, is that one of the end? One of the end. There were three pediments there, so perhaps. Hold on, I have a picture right here. I have a picture right here. Okay. Yeah, I can see the Right on that high legs. And that's a, a little safety issue. The benefits are kind of high. They are So, is there something that we can assuage everybody's issue with the long side distance with those benefits? Oh, sorry. So, uh, we, we want to work with the town, obviously, yeah. but, but I just want to point out on 48 section 3, 
a town can impose reasonable yeah, regulations yeah. as to bulk, height, yard size, setbacks, parking, and building covers. Mm -hmm. So none of this is applicable. Now, we're here to, I understand town council believes parking and traffic are related. I don't think 48 section three says that, but again, I'm not here to fight about it. If we're talking about lowering the wall, I guess my question would be to Greg, how high do we have to have a perception? So if we're talking about just the-, the not, I the, want more than the pediments, yeah. I so, want this to be two feet. So the, so the reality is, is that even if the wall was to disappear, we're putting a mounted septic system there that's over three feet in height. So whether the wall's there or not, there's gonna be a mounded earth berm in that location. I understand that, but you just said that it's going to slope. And if it slopes, that means it's not three feet high, but it slopes down to the edge. Is it? How, what is the grade on so the, the, back of the, the back of the wall adjacent to the septic system? And then the grade, what is the grade that you need at the back of the wall? The top of the wall is at 25.2. Right. The finished grade over the septic system is 27. So is it going to come right so to the top of the it's wall? It's going to come right to the top of the wall. The Which grade. is at 42 inches. That yeah. wall is 42 inches tall. I measured it. Okay. So, so talk about the, the, the main part of the wall is 42 inches. Yes. So we know that we we cannot require you to take out a wall. We were asking for some kind of cooperation and we gave some assistance. Well, I mean, I, I would certainly recommend to my clients that if, if we can do it with the septic, we can lower it. Uh, but we, we're going to need a wall for the septic system. We're going to need a wall for the septic system. That's how it's been approved. Yeah. I don't yeah, Like I said, I just, I don't know where a wall came. It's just, I get my baby. And honestly, neither yeah, it's, it's been there. Yeah. I can't even remember this being there. I don't know. It's a bit too old. I don't know. So, town council has primed that we, but Penny Board, other than Dover, and then can talk to him how standard B, which is traffic safety and ease of access at the street and highway entrances, exits of driveways, taking into account traffic volume, grades, site distance, and distance between such driveways. So, I think that in the spirit of cooperation, we're just going to, we're telling our decision and saying we're making no finding as to site distance, we're making no finding as to the volume of traffic out on country way. But perhaps you could look at lowering that wall, if at all possible, because it is a site distance issue and country way, it, it is a busy road. No, we, we, want we, would definitely, no, no, we would definitely look at that. I mean, in, in the overall safety of things, Karen, I mean, our, our residents don't drive. So we're going to lower traffic in and out. Now, there's still going to be people coming in to service our client, our residents. Right. But there used to be like 20 or 30 employees a day there. So um, it's going to be safer. I, I would think, Greg, right, that we can probably lower it to some extent, but obviously we have to be compliant with the septic requirements. That's great. Can you tell me what is on the shingles here? What is, what is on the shingles? Um, what is that? Any standing new shingles on, on, on top of the wall? I I don't know. That's uh, but that's what makes it really important. Sure. Yeah, we can. I can certainly look at that aspect of it. With regards to access into the parking lot, we're not making any physical changes to the entrance. Of the we're not changing yeah. the grade. We're not changing. So I'm not concerned it. about entering in and out of that parking lot. I am concerned about people that are developing up and down country way. I am very concerned about public safety and access. That is my main concern. I am concerned about people entering and exiting this driveway. I mean, okay. you, you will have traffic coming in. Yes, the residents don't drive, but vans are going to be coming in there. You could have potentially emergency vehicles coming in. We want it safe for everybody. Everybody. So if we, we if 
you can look at perhaps lowering the wall, I think that the board would really appreciate it. Well, we can certainly look at it. I, we'll, we'll talk to our clients. Most of them are unavailable because there was a uh, an event for their children um, in New Hampshire that it was a therapeutic thing, and, and so that nobody could be here tonight. But we certainly want to cooperate in, in lowering it somewhat. Way, you yeah. know, I'm sure we can figure something out. I'm I'm, I'm confident we can we can lower it in certain areas, probably not the entire wall, but in certain areas we can. Well, as we know, this whole area is going to be developed. I think we know this should be policy. And so we just wait. Public safety is a big concern for us. And, and I'm not going to say that these residents are any more vulnerable than other residents. But in, in issue, they, 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 they can be. Can, I was very concerned when they couldn't do this as a site. I was very I thought that that was really out there. I think it's great. Been a proponent of this, this since day one. It's just everybody's safety is a huge transfer. Okay. Okay. Anything else from anybody? Mm -hmm. Brandon, I can't until this wall is resolved. I can't go forward on this. Well, yeah. it's it's really not part of. It's, no part of it's not safety. part of you know technically. We we have a have site distance. The wall is not part of something that. We have jurisdiction over. We've raised the issue that they're going to work. Well, we can it. add a condition that says the applicant will make every effort to lower the wall as much as possible. Would, would that satisfy you? I just want them to be good neighbor to the people around them, as well as their own people that are there. That's all I want. I want them to be cognizant of site distances. It's just very, very important. Very important. They will be, and, and, and I'll definitely communicate that, and I certainly have no issue with, with the condition that the town player is speaking to. We will work with it as best we can to find what's out of mind. And now I'm just really a little concerned, too, that all of a sudden, they were really excited about the loading dock, and now that's gone away. So this is sort of somehow is evolved since. But well, I suppose that that doesn't matter anymore. The, the application clearly shows no loading dock. I understand. Right. So if there was a miscommunication, someone in our group might have not understood that. This is what we're talking about. It's what we're always talking about. Okay. So we know that these people have come before a lot of people before, and very often, you know, you say something in one meeting that is interpreted or not said in another meeting. Or, so you know, these are not professionals, these are mothers and fathers who are trying to do the very best for their children. And I think sometimes language gets a little conflated upon me. I think that's what happened. Anything else? No, I mean, when we get to it very, when we're reading the decision, I, I, I will insert a condition, um, you know. And go from the yeah. Yeah. I shall read them. Thank you. You're welcome. I move to make the following findings of fact based on information submitted by the applicant and the testimony given during a public meeting. One, on May 14, 2024, the applicant sale called and filed an application for site plan review for an executed project. Village Center and Neighborhood Research of the City Zone Bylaws, Section 580 and 770. The application included that is not limited to the following A application forms, Lucas Dean and letter from Ethan Dipley, Karen Joseph, dated March 11, 2024. B filing fee and advice list. C site layout 809 Country Way, Assessors Parcels 12 2 37. Situate mass dated 4 2024 by Morris Engineering Company of Inc. for sale, home Inc. consisting of one sheet. D. Authorization for Walter P. Sullivan of Sullivan and Palmerford PC to represent applicant sale home Inc. for site plan review for 809 way. Two, the property that is subject to the application is a 23,160 square foot parcel. Located off Country Way, situate 
Massachusetts. The property is currently improved with a flex space fabrication building, a two minutes concrete parking area and concrete wall at the front of the site. Three, the project is located in the village center of the neighborhood BCN zone district, more Citrus Village Center District BNSB, and the Outer Village Subdistrict OB, BCN NSB OB. For the zoning bylaw in effect for this project, is the bylaw approved by the Citrus Annual Town Meeting on 4 10, 2023, and the Attorney General on 6 13, 2023, and posted to the website on, in July of 2023. Five, the project proposed by the applicant consists of five residential units in an existing retrofitted building with no footprint change. The building is proposed as a mixed use building, MEV. The building has two one bedroom units, two two bedroom units, and one three bedroom units for a total of nine bedrooms. Seven parking spaces are required for the residential units, as the two one bedroom units require one space. Per unit or two spaces. The two bedroom units require 1.5 spaces per unit or three spaces, and the one three bedroom unit requires two parking spaces. The 1,705 square foot of retail slash office space requires one space for 500 square feet or 3.4 spaces. 10.4 parking spaces are required, and 12 are being provided. Six, the existing building is being retrofitted without a change in footprint or height. The bulk of the building and the setbacks of the building will not be changed as the project requires site plan review under the dome amendment. Land or structures may be subject to reasonable regulations in regard to the bulk and height of the structures and determining yard sizes, lot area, <laughs> setbacks, open space, parking, and building coverage. Requires. Town Council has opined the standards of Review from site plan review in section 770.6 of the zoning bylaw should be limited to sections B, C, H, and I of the standards of review. Criteria B, C, and I relate to the regulation of parking, and criteria H relates to building height and bulk. Seven, the BCN NSB OB mixed use building is an allowed use per section 420 and 580.3 of the zoning bylaws. And allow the building type of section 750 of the zoning bylaw. Eight, the base residential density of the BCN GDG GBC subdistrict for sections 5844 of the zoning bylaw for a mixed use building is 12 units per acre by right and 24 units per acre by special permit. Six residential units are allowed by right and five are proposed. Nine, section 58.4. Also has a minimum bulk standard for dwelling sizes. A one bedroom unit is required to have 600 square feet of usable floor area, and a two bedroom, two, two bedroom units are required to have 900 square feet of usable floor area. No information was provided for unit sizing. 10, no public realm standards are required for this development. 11, no affordable housing unit is required for the development. Among the five units. However, due to the nature of the development, all the units will be eligible for inclusion on the town's situate, town situate subsidized housing inventory. 12, an MUV includes lot standards and design standards found in section 750.6, including a minimum lot size is not required, street frontage of 50, 50 feet is required, there is 137.53 feet of frontage on the way. Lot, lot depth, depth is not required. The front yard filled two zone setback is zero feet for all building types. Approximately 71.5 feet is provided. Minimum side yard feet, approximately 10 feet is provided. Minimum rear yard is 20 feet, approximately 9.5 feet is provided as the footprint is proposed to remain untouched 9.5 is reasonable for the site. Outdoor amenity space coverage required is 15% of the lot. 12,180 square feet of open spaces provided are approximately 52.5% of the site. The septic system included is in the open space. 
No form information on the building height was provided. However, the existing building is less than four stories and 40 feet, and the height will not be changed. The minimum street facing wall width is 60 feet, and the minimum is 150 feet. Maximum is 150 feet. Approximately 115 feet has been provided. A street facing entrance is required. The building has a street facing entrance. A maximum building footprint is not applicable. 13 and MEV has general design standards found in section 750.5, including more than one principal building is allowed on a lot of the building, lot dimensional standards are met for each principal building individually. One building is on this lot. The lot is not a corner lot and has no requirements for corner lots. Multi-family buildings taller than 25 feet shall be required to be set back or stepped back from the street right of way. The existing building is not taller than 25 feet. The scale of the building is visually compatible with the site and its neighborhood. Building articulation standards have been met with buildings greater than 50 feet in width, designed to read as a series of smaller buildings with varied, uh, varied articulation. The street facing building elevation sample width is wider than 100 feet as the existing building is wider than 100 feet. Horizontal modulation and articulation are not required as the building is less than three stories. Street facing building facades shall provide surface relief to dormers and door canopies. Exterior treatments are to be provided the building has textures and patterns. 14 development site standards includes section 750.8. The development site consists of one building. The development site does not include any existing or proposed right of way. A mixed use building is permitted building type in this district. A minimum of 50 feet of frontage on a public way or publicly accessible street providing access to the development is provided. Development lot standards are not applicable. Site landscaping is provided. Plantings are arranged to not exclude additional traffic. Parking must be located a minimum of five feet behind the front facade. All parking is located in the front of the building, so this requirement is not met. Driveway servicing of the site is shown off country way. It is proposed as the existing opening of 37 feet. Trash storage areas outside are proposed in a fenced dumpster area. 15. Sustainable site design is required in the BCN district per section 751 of the zone bylaw. Stormwater management shall conform to domestic management practices described in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Stormwater Management Handbook. No changes to the existing site drainage are being made. There is a reduction in the impervious area. 16, a landscape plan shall be required for all submissions except where laid by the planning board. To the greatest extent possible, native plans shall be maintained and no plants listed as a base are prohibited by Massachusetts shall be used. Existing invasive plants shall be removed. A landscape plan has not been provided. The existing landscaping shall be maintained. 17. Mixed use developments shall provide access from parking lots to a public sidewalk and front building, as indicated in section 760.8. F.2. No walkway is provided to the sidewalk. On country way, but the driveway will provide access. 18 Citrus Zoning Bylaw, Section 770.6 of the School of Standard, a review for approval of proposed site plans which are required for proposed developments which are of size and that may have significant impacts on the neighborhood. Mixed use buildings require site plan reviewed by the planning board, as this is a no amendment project on the standards B, C, H, and I are applicable. 19, seven, section 770.6B, site plan approval standard B, traffic safety and ease of access at street and highway entrances and access of the driveways, taking account of traffic volume grades, site distances, and distances between such driveway entrances, exits, and the nearest existing street or highway intersections and times of peak traffic to flow. Fine. The site is located on Country Way. The project will consist of a mixed-use building with five residential units and nine bedrooms, as well as 
1,705 square feet of retail and office space. The proposed development will have its own separate off-street parking, meeting the requirements of Section 7. Access for the parking will be off country way. The applicant maintains the driveway has existed in excess of 15 years without issue and the traffic demand is reduced for the existing building. The applicant indicates there is a decorative wall along the, pro the project frontage, which will remain an access into the parking lot unchanged. Applicant make no determination on the capacity on country way to handle the traffic that will be generated by changing the development, use or site distance or distance between driveways. There is currently level grades and driveways within 100 feet of the site on the same side of the road been shown. This, as this project is being reviewed on the Dover Amendment, this standard is met. 20. Section 770.6 C, Site Plan Approval Standard C, Safety and Adequacy of Driveway Layout, Pedestrian Safety, Off Street Parking and Loading Sites, Minimizing Glare from Headlights and Light Intrusion, Sufficiency of Access to Service Vehicles, such as Electricity, Gas, Fuel, Telephone, Laundry, Rubbish, Removal, Water, Sewer, Fire, Police, Ambulance, and other routine or emergency vehicles. The proposed development will have its own separate off street parking meeting, meeting the requirements of section 750.8. Access will be from country way. Main access off country way is 36 wide. There are no internal walkways to reach the side walk of country way. The applicant indicates the occupants of the buildings don't drive and there is a reduction of parking spaces per existing. Applicant indicates the site will have sufficient access to service vehicles utility vehicles, and emergency vehicles. A loading zone will be described in the newly completed parking spot and provides access to existing refuse dumpster. As this project is being reviewed under the Dover Amendment, the standard is met. You get a lot of data. You get a lot of data. You get a lot of data. 21. 21. Section 7706. Complete H. Site plan approval standard H. Minimal, minimal, minimal structure of scenic views from publicly accessible locations. Finding the site does not consist of any scenic views from the publicly accessible locations and therefore the applicant complies with this requirement. 22, section 770.6.1 site plan approval standard I. Parking area shall be adequately buffered and shaded using native vegetation. Parking lots with 10 or more spaces shall be planted with at least one shade tree for 10 spaces of a caliber of at least two and a half inches BPH with each tree providing shade in the parking area. Parking areas in this physically degrading elements such as dumpsters and loading docks shall be designed to minimize the visual intrusion from the public place and residentially owned or zoned area. In addition, suitable screening of such areas by roof fences and dense native evergreen hedges five feet or more at the time of planting shall be utilized. The use of chain link fences shall be avoided except in industrial areas. Outdoor lighting, including lighting on the exterior, on the exterior of a building or lighting in a parking area, shall be arranged to minimize glare and light spillover to native neighboring properties. No outdoor light shall be located in more than 20 feet above the ground. Finally, project consists of one residential driveway for each 12, with 12 proposed parking spaces. Shade trees are shown within 10 feet of the parking areas. Exterior lighting shall be arranged to minimize glare and light spillover to adjacent properties, thereby meeting the requirement of the bylaw. Bylaw standard is yeah. Uh, based on the findings, the planning, by, planning board finds that the site plan review of the building center and neighborhood district and and parking special permit makes the requirement under the building center and neighborhood district section 580, 750, 760, and 770, as the project will be in harmony with the general purposes of this bylaw and the requirements of 
and to the whole chapter in A and will not have a greater detrimental impact on the neighborhood than it than it's uh, and, and its designs with considerable consideration for health and safety. Okay. Yes. Is there a second? Second. For discussion. For discussion. I just we just need to take out an intent and part of the special paragraph. Uh, as a point of order, can we make a uh, note for the record that there's nobody in attendance for public comment? That'll be in the right yeah, That'll be in the right All right. Yes. And we all just we go to the police here. Yes, we go. Any discussion? No. It says here it will not have a de greater detrimental impact on the neighborhood than the existing buildings and is designed with consideration for health and safety. It's the existing building, though. I, I, again, I'm on the wall, but nobody cares. It isn't that we don't care. That's not an issue. The issue is we don't have the start and out. It's not that we don't care. We do care. Well, lost time. Decision. It is we don't have a vote. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> we need a vote for time to pass. Five is fine. Five? No. So three, three to four. Three to one. Sorry. Three, four, one against. Sure. Decision based on the finding of fact testimony provided at the public meeting, the planning board approves the site plan view in the building center of the neighborhood districts for 809 with the following conditions. General requirements one, all construction work shall be done in accordance with the plan submitted by Morris Engineering Company, Inc., entitled Sale Home, Inc., 809 Country Way, Assessors, Parcels. 12-2-37 consisting of one sheet dated 4 25 2024. A copy of the approved plan conditions must be kept on site at all times during construction. Two, where the site plan review requires approval, permitting or licensing from any local, state, or federal agency that require approval, permitting or licensing is deemed a condition of the town of the planning board. The planning board or or approved this site plan review, including but not permitted to approval of the work by the board of selectmen and department of public works (DPW) and all public rights of way, including country way. Construction shall be all applicable federal, state, and local laws and regulations, including but not limited to those of the situated DPW, fire department, building department, board of health, planning board, as well as the Massachusetts DPP and state building codes. All necessary permits and approvals must be received prior to construction. Three, construction shall meet all requirements of the city zoning bylaw. Four, the applicant shall meet the current the applicant shall meet the current applicant and all its successors and interests. This site plan review shall lapse within two years. Which shall not include such time requirements to pursue or await the determination of an appeal under the general laws, chapter 48, section 14, from the grant thereof, if a substantial use thereof has not sooner commenced except for good cause, or in case of a special permit for construction, if construction is not begun on such date except for good cause. The planning board may extend set, set period for good cause shown upon receiving a written request from the applicant prior to the expiration of this period, which request shall provide a detailed description of good cause necessitating an extension. Public hearing may be required. Five, total number of residential dwelling units on a site shall not exceed five. There will be two one bedroom units, two two bedroom units, and one three bedroom units for a total of nine bedrooms. A bedroom shall be defined in accordance with Title V of the Sanitary Code. Six, the unit of a new building shall be numbered on the outside for identification, fire protection, and emergency response purposes. Seven, any modifications to the bulk height of the structure, yard, yard sizes, lot, setbacks, open space, building, building covered. Yeah. Part of the show, people want to be approved. 
waivers. Eight, a waiver from section 750.5b is needed as the existing building is wider than 100 feet. The existing building is being used as interesting articulation and a courtroom, excuse me, and a courtyard creating a unique design. The planning board grants, grants this waiver. Nine, per section 750.8d. One, all parking must be located a minimum of five feet behind the front facade. As some of the existing parking, as some of the existing parking is being used, money board grants yes. this requirement. Yes. Right. I'll pick it up. Okay. Utilities. Utilities, parking, traffic, and street improvements. Ten, maintenance and repair of the driveway and parking areas, stormwater management. Snow removal, lighting, and landscape will show you responsible for responsibility of the applicant. 11. All parking is limited to designated spaces as shown on the plan. 12. No new underground irrigation system should be allowed to connect to the town water distribution system or in any manner use municipal water in accordance with the policy made effective by the board of selectmen on October 8, 2014. And reaffirm the city of water commissioners on May 26, 2015. All irrigation systems installed in accordance with the policy must be supplied on site sources or private water suppliers at the expense of the property owner. 13. The applicant shall consent to allow members and town officials of the planning board and other persons acting under the authority of the planning board as its agents enter upon any lands and carry out inspections as may be necessary. The applicant shall cooperate with the planning board and the town officials and assist them in their efforts to verify the layout, design, and construction work in the site plan review plan are satisfactory and conform to town specification and requirements of the planning board. Noise, dust, and air quality control shall be in accordance with the regulations. 15. Construction of the proposed site and utilities shall be supervised by a registered Professional engineer who shall certify in writing to the planning board of completion that the proposed site and utilities were constructed in accordance with the plans. The certification for the improvements shown on the plans shall be accompanied by as plans, signed and stamped by the professional land surveyor and the supervising registered professional engineer. As built, must be submitted to the planning board prior to the issuance of the issuance of occupancy permit. All 16, all materials for utility construction shall be DPW construction standards. 17, the street opening permit will be required for each individual utility connection. 18, the determination and adequacy of the existing water service slash fire flow for the proposed use shall be provided by the applicant to the DPW and town planner for their approval to scheduling the construction conference. Installation of all water mains and purposes shall be performed according to the specifications of the W. Any required upgrades, modifications, or connection shall be at the applicant's expense. 19. The building, parking, walkways, and required signage shall meet all applicable requirements of the ADA, MAAB, and Central Commission on Disabilities, if applicable. 20. The applicant shall ensure that signs, landscaping, and other features located with the site triangle areas, project site, driveways, and intersection of country way are designed, installed, and maintained so it's not going to be lines of sight 2.5 feet in height. 21. The applicant shall ensure that the property manage, manager promptly removes snow. Wind roads located within the site triangle areas of projected site driveway intersection of country way exceeding 3.5 feet in height or that would otherwise inhibit site lines. 22 trash shall be stored in a fence dumpster location. Landscape and site amenities. 23 the applicant shall obtain the approval of the planning board and the town planner for any changes to the proposed plans. 24 a separate sign permit shall be required from the building department or any freestanding signs unless otherwise exempted under the zone bylaws. Signs shall be fully located 
on the applicant's property and should not block sight lines, trap entry egress from the site. Required prior to scheduling the pre construction conference. Point of five, prior to scheduling the pre construction conference, the applicant shall provide the planning board a copies of the reported site plan view. Required prior to the start of construction, 26 within two calendar weeks prior to the applicant's notification to the town planner that it intends to commence any work on the project site. A pre construction conference shall be held with the applicant, their representatives, their engineer, the site contractors, the town planner, the other and other representatives of the town as the board feels necessary. A list of all contract contract of contracts including names and telephone numbers shall be provided to the planning board, DPW, and police department. At least one telephone contact shall be available 24 hours per day in the event of emergency. 27, the property lines of the subject property shall be marked, flagged in the field under the direction of the surveyor, a notification to the town planner, a minimum of three business days prior to the start of construction, the property line shall be staked completely all times during construction. 28 construction fences shall be required as necessary to comply with federal, state, and laws. Required during construction 29. Construction work shall not be given by to 70 entities and any MS Saturday and trust is no later than 7 p.m. or well dusk for charities early. No construction shall take place on Sundays or weekly state or federal holidays. Thirdly, all work moving disturbance operations shall occur only while erosion and sedimentation control measures are in place in a proof of top letter. Such control measures shall remain in place until the top letter determines that the danger of erosion or sedimentation no longer exists. Thirty-one, if no sediment, including silty water, shall be allowed to leave the site during construction. Thirty-two, no parking or unload of a country way shall be permitted during construction unless approved in advance and controlled at the same time by the police department. Construction vehicles shall use the designated construction process. 31, the applicant shall notify the central police department 48 hours in advance of any significant equipment and construction material arrival to the site which may cause a safety hazard or material disruption of the public way such that a police detail is necessary to ensure safe passage. Any police detail required is at the expense of the applicant and is required when the police department determines it is necessary. 34. The applicant shall not allow any large construction equipment or trucks to stage or idle on public roads and shall not allow such equipment or trucks to idle prior to 7 a.m. Police details may be required for construction access or work within the layout of country way. 35. Construction activity shall be conducted in a work like manner at all times. Growing dust or debris shall be controlled by the applicant through civilization, breaking down for other proper storage and disposal methods. Required prior to issues of occupancy permits. 36. No certificate of occupancy shall be issued until the planning board and the building commissioner are satisfied that the parking areas and installation of necessary utilities is in full compliance with the approved plans in the site going field. Administration 37, all time periods referenced in this document for completion of conditions shall be told in case any appeals are taken. 38, the site plan review shall run with the land and shall be void if it is not recorded at the registry of deeds within 120 days of the expiration of the appeal period for such extension of that time period granted by the planning board following approval of the site plan review. The applicant shall provide proof that the special permit was recorded to the planning board. 39, the site plan review shall last within two years from the date of its issuance unless substantial use or construction has commenced prior to that time in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 48, Section 9. 40, all construction work shall be done in accordance with the plans. Failure to comply with any condition of this permit shall cause it to be deemed invalid. And 41, any condition to date herein that bears in the plan supersedes the plan where it differs. Yes, yeah, second, 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 second for discussion. All right.
right, so going back to condition 38, it's not, I'll take out a special permit to put site plan review on that. Um, I'm at, adding at the end of landscaping and site amenities section, the applicant shall make every reasonable effort to lower the wall to improve site distance prior to application for an occupancy permit. Um, if I may, sure. Number twenty. Yep. Our design, scope, and maintenance was not to impede lines of sight. Two point five feet. Each. Right there. Yeah, but if I may, we're not designing and installing our. Yeah, I mean, it, it's existing. It shall ensure, ensure. Well, that's what it says. It says ensure. I, I, I think under the Dover Amendment, you know, we agree, you, I agree with you. We should try to be good neighbors. I'm going to, we're going to take those efforts to see if we can lower it. Uh, but to the extent you know, that we have a septic system that requires retaining, you know, we're going to have to deal with it. Anything else, Ken? No, that's, that was, I mean, are you okay with the condition I added? I'm okay with what you added, sure. Did I have a comment, so I wanted to say? Yeah, well, you know, I don't agree that the wall has to be 2.5 feet. I mean, we can lower to the extent that we can. Um, and, I, you know, I, I heard uh, Spurline say that she measured it and it's 2.5 feet now. No, it's 42 inches high. Which is third, three feet or three. Yes, it is. So we're, we, we can't lower to 2.5 all the way across and comply with our subject system design. So that's all. Right. But that said, those two pillars are probably closer to five feet tall. But they said that they would be exposed. You're going to address that. Yeah, it's just it's the pillars of that. She looks like she's like the pads. Yes. So yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. On hands, it looks like they're decorative. Yeah. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. That's what I said. You can go back and tell us. We can do that. Yeah. So, do you want? Is the intent to strike that? Is that? I mean, I, mean, I, I feel like thirty-eight supersedes one. Yeah, I think. I. I think mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Our design is stalled. We're not installing those. No, but it says maintain. Okay. So, so what does the board want? What does the board want? Would you read what you add? I yeah. added a whole different new condition. Yeah. Right. I, mean, I would just ask the word maintain be stricken. And 38, we're going to use all reasonable efforts to lower the wall, to make everybody happy. But we're also going to need to deal with our subjects. So again, so yeah, that, I agree so, with you. All right, so we should all have it. So twenty taken out and maintains. Right, twenty taken out and designed and installed. Right, and so the condition, the applicant, a new condition twenty five will I'll change the numbering. So the applicant shall make every reasonable effort to lower the wall to improve site distance. Prior to application for for an occupancy permit, I can look that. Sure. And then maintain will be struck out of twenty. Yes. Right. Yes. As amended. Mister Secretary, as amended. Second. Deputy Blood is hereby all in favor. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. Are you going to the open house you leaving tonight? I, I hope to. It's next week, right? Yeah. Yeah, it is I have my first child getting married and 35 relatives all arriving on us that week. So I don't know if I'm allowed to go anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. Very exciting stuff. Enjoy. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Take care.
How about that? Yeah. I can let you take it. Motion to close the meeting. Second. Okay. All right. Thank you, Sam.